Oh, and how are you? Welcome in, everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Happy, happy, happy Saturday, Ashton. Mary Graham, Ron Wilson, how's everybody doing? I hope y'all are having a great day today. Beef stroganoff is on the menu and I couldn't be more excited to share you all how easy it is to make beef stroganoff that tastes delicious. Yes, happy Saturday, Nicole, how are you? Welcome back in. Miss B, hello, how are you? Ron Wilson, how you doing today? Howdy. <laughs> Saj, hello, welcome back. Erica, hello, hi. Lynette Drew Moss, oh, let me see, that's funny. I'm new and ready to eat. Y'all, Drew Moss is not new. He's not new. <laughs> he been here since day one. <laughs> Miss B, hello. Cutie Pie, hello, how are you? Hello, Paula Jackson, Patricia. Sonia, how are you? Welcome back. Denise Billups, welcome back, how are you? Maddie Watson, cat lover. We have Sharon Johnson here and Hank Norman, welcome. <laughs> G Ben, hello, Elizabeth. C Life, hello. Mary Graham, hello. Christine Brown, hello, hello. Miriam James, hello. Juanita and Bunny and Renee, hello. If there's anybody in here at any time that I happen to miss your message, I don't mention your name, please forgive me. I'm only one person, I just got two eyes. And it's just definitely impossible for me to read every single message on there. You see from time to time, I gotta look away from, I gotta look away from the comments sometimes because just looking at the comments like this can get overwhelming to my eyes. Hello, everybody. Welcome in. Happy Saturday. Beef stroganoff is on the menu. I'm gonna show you an easy, delicious recipe. Nancy, welcome. Waquel, hello. Terrell Unknown, hello. Tony, hello. If you are new, Miriam, hello. Heidi Fuller, hey. If you're new, Chris, welcome in. Rita, welcome in. Let me know that you're new. And I would love to welcome you in such a way, but if I happen to miss the message, I still say that you're new and the people in the background would love to welcome you. Y'all, give me one second, I'll be right back. I'll be right back in two seconds. Hopefully it didn't take me too long. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome in, welcome in. Listen, uh, if you look up and you realize that you have not given a thumbs up, make sure you give a thumbs up to the live. I'm here to show, ouch. I'm here to show you all a great day today. Least you could do is give me a thumbs up. So what I'm seeing here, I can see 161 people here in the live, but only 66 of you have given a thumbs up. Make sure to give a thumbs up. We're gonna have a great time today. Happy Saturday. Michaela, hello. Eula, welcome back. Derek, welcome back. Okay, let's see. Oh, you thought stroganoff looked like dog food. Well, I'm gonna tell you this. Hey, Derek, how are you? Alyssa Wooten, Helen Dickerson, welcome, Shannon Adams. Okay, so uh, Drew says when he was little, he thought that beef stroganoff looked like dog food. Well, I'm gonna tell you what. Um, 
when I when we make this stroganoff today, you let me know if you still feel that way. I, I don't think you're gonna still feel that way. I think you're gonna say, my goodness. I think you're gonna say, my goodness, it doesn't look like I thought it did, right? Okay. Cream corn. Ronald says no cream corn. Okay. Ronald, how you doing today? Today on Dina's Live is beef stroganoff. Thank you, Sonia. Nurley, welcome back in. T Rose, hello. K Coffee, how you doing? Yes, you did. You made it. You made it. And I'm so glad to see you, Christopher. Welcome back. Urban T. I can't wait. I'm excited. Yeah. Okay. That's great. That's great to hear. We're going to have a fun time. So what I'd like for you all to do, bring the thumbs up, up so it can match with the people that's in here. And then very shortly, I'm going to give the people maybe a good five minutes to come into the chat. And then I'm going to jump up and we're going to get started. It's Saturday. I got a great recipe planned ahead for you all that I'd like to say, Mm, this recipe can be a little difficult, but I think with Gina's teaching, you know, my teaching in detail, you're going to be able to understand how to do this. You gave the thumbs up. Thank you, Renee. James, hello. Francis, hello. What's your name? Azale, Azale, can you make the Grimace shake? It's blueberries, raspberries, vanilla ice cream. Man, I tell you what, that sounds good. I'll have to look into how you make it first. If I can figure out how to make it, possibly, I have to say possibly, possibly I could make it for you. It sounds really good, actually. Oh, T. Rose says, beef stroganoff is great for the holidays. Yes, this definitely could be a recipe you can make for the holidays. Oh, you said beef stew kind of looks like it too? Okay, so I did. You think anything that, that's in a gravy looks like dog food. <laughs> I don't understand that. Thank you all. Thank you, Derek. Uh, Lalina, welcome in. Sheila, hello, hello, hello. Looking great. Thank you, Denise. Absolutely. Last time I had this was hamburger helper stroganoff. <laughs> so you're excited. Okay. But I tell you what, the hamburger helper meals are delicious. I have to step in and say that. I've, I've had them. I've had them and I love them. <laughs> But when you, when you learn how to make something homemade, you'll never turn back to, you know, something like that. Now, every once in a while, I do like the cheesy cheeseburger hamburger helper. <laughs> I'm ready, Gina. I'm so excited, says Urban Tea. Okay. All right. Jay Beats is back. How you doing? Okay. And you are saying, what's good and happy Saturday? Thank you, Heidi. All right, y'all. <laughs> Denise. <laughs> All right, you're thinking about, okay, okay, okay. You're subscribed too. Okay, thank you. That's great, Urban. All right, so let me go ahead. I'm going to get up and we're going to get the apron on. Listen, if you tell your family and friends, tell everyone you know that Jeannie Young is live, what we're about to do. It's about to go down in this kitchen. Get your ingredients out. Make sure your hands are clean. We're going to have a fun time. Now, before, before I get started, hand me the microphone, please. Um, before I get started, if you are the person that wants to eat your beef stroganoff over top of mashed potatoes, let's just say you want to eat yours on top of mashed potatoes, you go ahead, get started on some potatoes. That means cutting your peeling and cutting your potatoes and getting them boiled in salted water so they can cook for about 20 to 25 minutes, okay? So if you're cooking mashed potatoes with yours, go ahead and get started on the potatoes, okay? So um, I'm gonna be doing the egg noodles, but I have some pre-made uh, potatoes on the side so I can show you what it would look like over mashed potatoes and also over the egg noodles, okay? All right, let's put the microphone in, and those of you that are familiar with my channel, you'll know that the sound will leave out for just a quick second, but the sound will come right back in. Okay, microphone's on, and I'm ready to rock and roll. 
You like egg noodles? I do too, Ron. I like egg noodles. I love a good egg noodle. And all you really gotta do is salt and pepper them, right? Put some melted butter on them and they are delicious, right? They have such a great texture to them. Okay, so let's get the microphone. We got. Let me check the top of this microphone. All right, we're ready. We're ready to rock and roll. You like egg noodles too? Uh-huh. Okay. Rigo, hello, welcome, welcome, welcome. Get my apron. So I says, I just made some egg noodles and beet, let me see. You just made some egg noodles with beef chunks and gravy and it was fire. That, that sounds good. That's basically what we're making today. We, we are, we're making that. And I mean, there's a little twist and turn to it, but that's basically what we're making here. But it does have a twist. All right, let's get this on. Making sure I'm not lopsided here. Perfect. Ready to rock and roll, says Nicole. All right, Derek Eats, are you ready for this here recipe? When I come back around, I think candy yams will candy yams will go great. Yes. Um, when I come around to the other side of the calendar, give me red hearts in the comment section to let me know if you're cooking with me today. I'd love to know who all's going to be cooking. Let's flip this thing around. I'll be over there in a hot second. Yeah, I'm ready. Okay. Hi everyone, hi Gina. It took me forever to find how to do the comment post, but no worries, you found it. What's your name? Okay, uh, die, 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 mom, by, I don't know how to say your name, but I'll say Reed. Welcome in and thank you for coming in to join us today. You gotta get that. Okay, 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 we got all our ingredients out. Make sure you double bag that, okay? Don't put that trash in the dumpster without double bagging it. Okay, let me wash my hands, everybody. We're gonna get started. Hello, Chris, welcome in. Okay. <clears throat> so 
So now the first thing that we need to do is let's take a look at the meat. After the meat, we'll do our mushrooms, excuse me, our garlic and our onions, okay? So what we're gonna do with the meat is if you purchased a beef stew meat, like I asked of you, then you're gonna cut yours exactly like I'm cutting mine. I will give this a nice rinse off here in just one second. I'm just gonna use some cold water, okay? I'm gonna rinse it off here in your colander. Nothing too special. And when we cut it to uh, break it down a little bit, if there's any fat on there, we'll cut that off. So let's rinse this. It'll take us 1.2 seconds to rinse the meat off. Cold water. But let's just say, let's talk about something. Let's just say you purchased a steak. You have a London broil or you have a uh, ribeye steak or, or whatever you have, strip steak. Um, and it's not this meat that I'm using. Only thing you still need to do is cut your meat into slices. Okay, cut your meat into slices. Nothing too thick, but nothing too thin. You don't want really thick pieces because when the pieces are thick, they tend to uh, take a while to, to tenderize, okay? All right. All right, I got clean meat here. <clears throat> what is it? You're debating what kind of cake? Oh, hello from California. Where are you people from? Okay, so Rico, Rico would like to know, where's everybody from that's in the chat? <laughs> I, always, I always wonder that. I never really ask it, but I always do wonder. Okay, so when you have the beef stew meat, this is what your beef stew meat looks like. Can the camera come in and just see? It's chunks, okay? And you don't want big, huge chunks in the recipe. So what do we do? Well, we're gonna break it down a little bit, okay? So come on in so you all can see. We're gonna make some slices. This is one pound of meat. I know um, that Sonia was saying in the last live that we did when we made pepper steak, she said more meat for me and less vegetables. So absolutely, if you're making this recipe, it, you might have one that's already nice and thin and sliced. If you're making this recipe, uh, like if she was making this recipe, she'd probably wanna use maybe a pound and a half or two pounds of the beef, okay? But I, here's what I feel like. When I purchase one pound of meat, and I slice it down and make more pieces, I feel like I have enough, at least to feed four people, right? So I'd like to say one pound of the beef stewed meat, will, it will feed four people comfortably where you could go back and have seconds, okay? <clears throat> Tammy, hello and welcome in. You see any fat on there, just slice it off or use kitchen shears to get that off, okay? Just like so, we'll be done with this part here in just a second. This doesn't take any time. Here we go. Beautiful meat here. I tell you what, I'm excited for this recipe. And I'd love to know, what, I, what I'd love to know is if you're cooking with me today, I want you all to let me know when I'm done cooking and when we're done cooking, is do you all think this recipe is easy? Or did you think that it was hard? Okay, so, so that's what I'd love to find out after we're all done. All right, so we're getting there. Let's see how everybody's doing. April, welcome in. Okay, so you, so, okay, let's see. You're watching from Elberton, Georgia. Welcome, Susan. Thank you for coming in and joining us today. If you look up and you realize you didn't give a thumbs up, make sure to give a thumbs up to the live. It's very important. All right, we're almost there to the finish line with the beef, and then we'll season this baby. We're gonna season our beef with salt, pepper, and garlic powder. The best seasonings out there, okay? Salt, pepper, and garlic powder is always gonna give you great flavor to any meat, right? If you wanna use onion powder, you can. All right, but you don't have to. Salt, pepper, and garlic powder are my go-to spices when I want to make a meat taste really good. 
All right, we have this part done. Let me show you the size pan that I'm gonna be using. Okay, so this pan here will be able to hold a gravy. It's gonna be able to hold meat and a sauce in there and a couple of veggies, all right? I think it's like a 12 inch pan. I, I think it is, don't, don't really quote me on that, but I believe it's a 12 inch pan there. So look at this, look how much meat we have here. And I am excited. So now there's one thing that's very important. Let me get a plate for that. <clears throat> Here's what's very important when you are um, going to cook beef. You don't want it to, <coughs> excuse me, be piled on top of each other in the pan because if at any time the meat is piled on top of each other, it will steam versus getting a nice um, sear onto it. We want like some really nice golden brown color to it on both sides of the meat uh, versus cooking it in the pan like that it doesn't get it and will steam and get like a funky texture. Okay, so if you need to turn around and, and cook it in two batches, absolutely you can. That way the meat is cooking like this, right? Versus piled up like this in the pan. Okay, we don't want it like that in the pan. We want it like that in the pan, all right? <clears throat> so let's go ahead and season our meat with salt, pepper, and garlic powder. Okay, in the meantime, I want to take this so that it can get cleaned. The purpose for cleaning the, the cutting board right now is because anytime you have a raw meat, you must sanitize and clean what you're using, whether it's your hands, you know, uh, your utensils and your cutting board, so that you don't pass bacteria to uh, whatever you're getting ready to touch. Okay, so making sure your hands are clean after touching that raw meat is going to help you in the long run, making sure nobody gets an upset stomach. Okay, so there we go. I, I put a wet, clean paper towel underneath my cutting board to prevent my cutting board from moving when I'm cutting on it. Okay, so the cutting board's clean. Our hands are nice and clean. Let's go ahead and season Salt, pepper, garlic powder. Don't be shy when you season. When you season, just put it on there. <laughs> Only seasoning you gotta worry about is the things that have a lot of sodium in it. Okay, so be careful with your salt. You can use a little bit of salt. You can even make this recipe without salt. And then you can tell your loved ones, hey, listen, if you want some salt, put your own salt on there. And people will understand, they really will. Because not everybody can have the sodium, right? So if that's your situation, you can use it or you don't have to. I'm going in with my hands and I want to really mix in those gorgeous spices into the beef, okay? Now, we're going to let this beef set for, mm, let's just say, a good seven minutes, okay? We really want the spices to seep into this meat um, before we use it. Give it a second and let the spices seep in before we throw it into the pan. Another thing that I like to tell you all is um, if you take your meat right out of the refrigerator and you just start cooking it right away, what's going to happen? The meat will be so cold, it will seize up in the pan, it will turn out dry, right? But when you give the meat some time to kind of hang out on the counter, it's came up to room temperature, it's not freezing cold, it cooks better. Because the meat is relaxed, it's not freezing cold, and it just cooks up perfect every time. So once again, I gotta wash my hands, okay? And then I'm coming back and we're gonna cut our onion, our garlic, and our mushrooms. Onion, garlic, and mushrooms. And by time we're done cutting the onion, garlic, and mushrooms, and we will be ready to put our meat into the pan and I'm going to show you how much oil we'll be using to cook our meat. So let me look in the chat and see if everybody's doing okay. How's everybody doing? Is everybody okay? Happy Saturday and welcome in. We're making beef stroganoff here at the Young's house and we're going to have a fun time doing it. Okay? Alright, so let's get started. 
Now, let's talk about the mushrooms. Mushrooms um, do not accept, mushrooms do not accept water very well because mushrooms are like a sponge and they soak up water. And we don't want for our mushrooms to soak up water. So how do you clean them? Well, I'm gonna tell you right now. Use a damp, clean paper towel and just wipe them off. You may see some mud or some sand, wipe it off. Or you can use a brand new clean toothbrush and dampen it a little bit just to clean it off just like so, okay? You don't wanna submerge them in water because then it gets real kind of funky, okay? So you can cut up the stems if you don't mind the stems or you can discard up the skip stems. Here's what we're gonna do. Okay, let me see where everybody's at. Christopher says, Lord have mercy, I'm having a barbecue chicken, ribs, garlic sausage, baked mac and cheese, potato salad, baked beans, peach cobbler, and brownies with walnuts. Oh, okay, so let me ask this question. I am I invited? <laughs> Was I invited to this? <laughs> Did you invite me? <laughs> All right, let's cut up some mushrooms. Now, there's going to be some people out there that don't like mushrooms. If you're that person, by all means, you don't have to use mushrooms, okay? I promise you it'll turn out just as delicious with or without the mushrooms. But here at the Young's House, we love some good mushrooms, right? So I'm going to cut a few and put them in there. Miss Tress, welcome. I want to eat that meal, says Gina. <laughs> Gina, welcome back in. <laughs> oh, we enjoy Christopher. Yes, that really sounds good. So now, is that what you're having for the 4th of July? My goodness. I'm still on the fence of trying to figure out what I'm going to make. I'm trying to figure it out. What, what, what are we going to have for the fourth? I guess we'll figure it out. I feel like this is really enough. That's plenty enough. Like I said, by all means, if you don't like mushrooms, don't use it, okay? I'll use these mushrooms a little later, okay? So I'm just going to put them here. We're going to cut our onion. And I'm praying to the good Lord I don't go off crying with this onion. That's a big onion right there. Gina, tell Christopher. Yeah, oh, Christopher, that, I am. <laughs> Christopher, I'm in your driveway right now, and I'm beeping the horn. <laughs> he won't open the door, y'all. He won't open the door. <laughs> Christopher, you see me out there. I'm looking for the baked macaroni and the peach cobbler. That, that's what I'm here for. <laughs> Gina, I'm cooking with you, and I have a question. Can you use mushrooms in a jar? Absolutely you can. I love mushrooms in a jar. You can, you can, no issue there. Now, I'm not gonna get too wild with the, with the uh, onion. I'm just gonna use a little bit of onion. A little bit of onion's gonna bring great flavor, but let's just say you're the person that don't like onions, just don't put it in there, okay? But I'm gonna put a little bit in there. I'm using a little bit because I don't wanna cry. <laughs> Slice it, dice it, however you wanna do. Just get it in there. Beautiful, okay? And so now I want to take a garlic clove and chop it up. Gina, what kind of mushrooms are you using? I'm using brown baby Bella mushrooms, okay? But any kind of mushroom, you can use a white button mushroom. Um, the reason why I'm using the brown ones is because they're pretty. They're really pretty versus um, some of the other ones, okay? Um, so, any kind of mushroom, mushrooms in the jar, button mushrooms, any kind you want to use will work. Great question. I thought you were here, Sonia, says Derek. <laughs> okay, so you want to play. We're, we're happen to order in your sandwiches watching. I, I don't understand. Kathy says we're happen just order in your sandwiches. I don't understand what you're saying in your message. I'm going to turn around and take the side of my knife and I'm going to whack, just like this, the side of my knife so that I can get the skin 
off of this garlic. Otherwise, you're going to be peeling for days trying to get that skin off. Take a look at how I like to do it. Use the side. Use your fist. Whop it. Whop it. Okay, and so it helps to break down the garlic, but not only does it help to break down the garlic, it will also help to take the skin off. You see how the skin came off easy? And then we chop. Chop it up as fine as you can, but it doesn't have to be super fine. Okay, I feel like that right there, that's good enough. Okay, so we'll just set that aside. Okay, so now I wanna wash the garlic and onions off of my hands. And then we're going to get started cooking up our beef, okay? Now, our beef is going to go in the pan, but before I put my beef in the pan, I'll be showing you just how much oil that I want to use. Can you make sure that's plugged in? I don't think the top is plugged in. Happy Saturday. Welcome in if you're just now coming in. If I miss your message as you're coming in, I apologize. I love you guys. Hey, Cameron, Carmen or Cameron, I think it's Carmen, welcome in. Stacy, hello. Happy 4th of July, Nita. Turn it down. Okay, so now, somebody out there needs to know how much oil we're we gonna put in our pan for our meat. Come on in and take a look, y'all. So I got this pan heating up. This is how much oil I wanna use, not too much. It's literally just about a tablespoon, okay? And I wanna just kind of move it around. Well, I feel like I need a little tiny bit more, just enough really to coat the bottom of the pan. We're not trying to deep fry our oil, no? So you can see how the oil is coating all the bottom of the pan, okay? So what we're gonna do, we wanna heat up our pan on a medium high heat. Heat the pan up on medium high. And as soon as the pan is nice and hot, we can turn around and put our beef into the pan. Meanwhile, let's see how everybody's doing. Derek, I was asking a question for someone in the chat. Hold, okay, hold on, let me see. Who wants to know how the mushroom she was using? Okay, okay. Are you cooking this today, Ron? You got kicked out. Who got kicked out? Let me see. No, he didn't, y'all. Okay, come on in. I'm gonna show you how I like to do my noodles. The water is boiling behind us, okay? So let's get our noodles in while our pan is heating up, okay? So come on and follow me. Follow me, follow me. Follow me, follow me. Here we are, we got beautiful water boiling. We're gonna salt it. You're making potatoes, rice, or noodles, you salt the water so that it tastes good. Because you don't want noodles that don't have no flavor, right? You give them flavor just by adding simple salt. Same thing with potatoes and rice. Salt the water. Okay, so I really feel like this is a 16 ounce bag. I feel like all I need is just half the bag. Okay, how about that? I used a little over a half, but that's okay. So let me go ahead and stir it while you all are here. Give it a nice stir around, and guess what we're gonna do? We're gonna cook that baby for 11 minutes. It's gonna be nice, beautiful, and perfectly cooked in 11 minutes. Oh yeah, perfect. I'm gonna set a timer for 11 minutes. You, sir, need to turn your uh, music down. It's very loud. Y'all tell Dakota to turn his music down. It's too loud. My goodness. <laughs> Somebody tell me they like when I say my goodness. All right, I got an 11-minute timer on here. If you are making homemade potatoes, make sure you're checking in on your potatoes, okay? And in the meantime... Let's see how everybody's doing. Oh, you can't hear the rap music at all. They, they can't hear the music. They can't. <laughs> Dakota, stop with the music, says Eula. <laughs> Dakota, turn your music down, says Sonia. <laughs> Y'all, thank you. you. You have my back. Thank you so much. I needed that. We're, hey, we're 
right here. <laughs> Dakota, turn your music down for your mom, please. <laughs> Thank you, Mildred. <laughs> Uh-oh, Drew said turn that heavy metal down. <laughs> All right, here we go, y'all. So now our pan is nice and hot. Don't put the meat in until your pan is hot, okay? So we're going to cook the meat. Once the meat is golden brown and it's beautiful, we're going to take it out the pan and then we'll re put it in some onion and garlic. And from there, once the onion and garlic gets cooked, I'm going to show you how to make the sauce and really the dish will be done. All right? So let's get our meat in. If I haven't said, I hope you all are having a great day today. I hope you all are having a splendid day today. You hear that sizzle, sizzle, sizzle? That's what you're looking for. Make sure the meat is not on top of itself because it will steam. Okay, and I, I feel like I'm gonna take this pan and put it on the burner behind me so I can get a bigger circumference of the heat versus using this one here. But never worry, because you're gonna be able to see everything that I do today in this tutorial. Thank you, Sonia. All right, this is great. We're getting a nice sear. I am going to go ahead and decide to take this back here. But no worries. You're going to be able to see everything. golden brown that's what we're looking to get on every piece of meat turn the heat up on medium high make sure it's not piled up on top of each other and every once in a while I'm glad I got to show you that piece every once in a while I want you to come in shake the pan or give it a nice stir so we can make sure all sides of the pieces beef is nice and golden brown just like that one was And this recipe is splendid. 
stink and easy to make. It is. You're going to love, love, love this here recipe. You're going to love this recipe. So now I just happen to uh, have some pre-made potatoes that I'm going to heat up because I feel like making homemade potatoes. Not today. <laughs> so we're just going to heat these up in the microwave uh, when we need them.
looking good. Is everybody doing okay? <laughs> Sonia says, at least my legs will be toned with your car. <laughs> yeah, pedaling the car with your feet. We, we have the best legs. Maybe, maybe I need to get that. I'm the one that needs to get that type of car. If we're talking about getting our legs toned, <laughs> I'm the first one that needs to order that car. <laughs> said, can you use pre-made gravy? Yes, you can use pre-made gravy. And that, that is a great question. I totally understand that there's a lot of people out there that really don't want to make a gravy. And it's okay. It's okay. If you want to use a pre-made gravy, you can, and this would be just as delicious. Absolutely great question. And you kind of answered it as well. All right, so there's my butter going in. I'm using a, a, just a country crop plant-based butter. Salt and pepper. Not too much salt. Pepper. You can cover this with plastic wrap. But make sure you get that butter. Come in with the camera. Excuse me. Make sure you get that butter all over your noodles just like so in this manner and then we can set our noodles aside all right beautiful nice amount of salt nice amount of peppers so they pepper so it tastes delicious now i'm going to put it back here away from 
the camera because I, I, it has a lot of steam in it. Okay, so since we need a little extra oil in our pan, come in and see how much oil I have. I have the fawn, the beautiful bits, but I ain't got a lot of oil. Let's go ahead and put a little bit in there. Perfect. Okay, let's get our garlic in there. Get the garlic to saute and up. Once you begin to see that your garlic has a brown color to it, a light brown color, then we can add our onions and mushrooms, okay? And from there, we're gonna make this easy peasy gravy to your young staff, okay? I want to keep making your gravies until I can do them without watching a video. Okay, I, I think you can do it. I, I know you can. I have all the faith in the world that you can do it and anybody can do it. Now, I always like to say, anything that I can do in the kitchen, y'all can do it too. Oh, you can. I'm not pulling any magic tricks in here. I'm not. All right, so I'm gonna grab some flour. I'm not using a whole lot, okay? I'd love for you all to take a look at the beef. Look at the color that we was able to get onto our beef without um, without the flour. We, we got a great texture to that beef there, okay? And, and without putting the meat on top of each other, making sure it's all on the bottom of the pan, that's the nice char that you're gonna get onto the beef. Here, let, let me come close and I'll show them this one. Look at that, like that right there. That's gonna taste like it came off of the grill. You hear me? Oh wait, that's what I'm looking for. The darker that it is, the better it'll taste when it comes to steak. You know, you know what charred steak tastes like. It tastes good, right? Absolutely it does. Okay, I don't use salt, Gina. I use Miss Dash. Oh, absolutely. It's fine. It's fine. You don't have to use salt. The Mrs. Dash will do the trick. Mrs. Dash is absolutely amazing. And I'm all for using Mrs. Dash. Yes, yes, yes. It's, it's a great substitute. And it tastes good. Right? So come in and look at my... Yes, K Coffee says flavor. Uh-huh. There is. There's flavor. All right, gorgeous. We got, we're getting some color onto our garlic, and now's the perfect time. Let's go ahead and put some onions in. Come on in, y'all. Onions right on top of the garlic and mushrooms, okay? Turn this on like a medium, medium-high heat. Once the onions begin to get what we call translucent, which is clear in color. Um, and the mushrooms begin to get some nice color onto them. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna add some flour to start our gravy, okay? It's not gonna be a whole lot of gravy, uh, I'm sorry, it's not gonna be a whole lot of flour that we'll be using. Because one thing that's gonna help to thicken up our gravy is gonna be our handy dandy heavy cream. Okay, Gina, do you always use butter in your egg noodles, Nancy? I always do, always. Anytime I make egg noodles, I put uh, butter on the egg noodles, salt and pepper. And you could even put some parsley flakes just to make it nice and pretty. But yes, anytime I make egg noodles, the butter is gonna help them to stop sticking together and it gives a great flavor. Otherwise, they're gonna be plain, right? So the salt and pepper and butter, it just comes together like peas and carrots. Great question. Gina, how do you clean already chopped mushrooms from the store? Well, um, I, okay. The kind of mushrooms that come, I've never seen chopped mushrooms. I've seen sliced mushrooms. And I just do them the same way with the damp paper towel or a clean toothbrush, a brand new toothbrush, and just brush them off, okay? Otherwise, if I get them out of the jar, you don't have to do nothing but just drain them, right? And use those. So great question. Gina, won't the meat be tough if it's not, if, if it's not tenderized? Uh, the meat, this meat will not be tough. <laughs> this meat 
will not be tough. Um, the way that we're cooking it, it, I promise you it's not going to be tough. It's going to be delicious, right? Um, now, we are going to cook this two times. And when you decide that you want to take this meat that's already been cooked once and then let it simmer in a gravy, what happens is it begins to tenderize in the gravy. It begins to tenderize. It gets, you're putting it into a liquid. And the liquid will help to tenderize it. And I can make it a promise to you that yours will be tender. <laughs> he said it'll melt right in your mouth. <laughs> Absolutely it will. Is 30 minutes too long to bring the meat to room temperature? Oh, it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. You should be fine. You should be fine there. You should be just fine. I, I use beef consomme instead of regular beef broth. Oh, that's great. That's great. That's even more great flavor. Great choice. to pick up all those beautiful spicy flavorful bits in the bottom of the pan so right now we have garlic onions mushrooms that just really cooked down into so much flavor and it's going to create an amazing gravy you bet it is so now here's what we need you all to do let's go ahead and put that half a cup of flour uh, oh yeah put that half a cup of flour in come on in y'all with the uh, vegetables and I want you to somewhat move the vegetables gradually into the flour okay just like so we want to coat those veggies okay if you feel like your pan is a little too dry and mine is dry you can put some oil in your pan but I'm not going to do that until I coat my vegetables 
in that half a cup of flour, okay? How's everybody doing? Is everybody doing okay? <laughs> I don't know what Kate Coffee talk about, Drew. I'm lost in the sauce. I think she told you a fib. <laughs> she talking about another Gina Young. Oh, does anybody in my family pick out uh, like vegetables like onions and mushrooms? No, uh, they pretty much like them. Uh, let's see, if, if I make my grandmom's um, linguine pasta salad, my husband will pick out the black olives. So when I make that, I always know he's picking out the black olives. Okay, so take a look in y'all. Let me show you what I have going on really interesting. Come in to see. We got vegetables, gar we got our garlic, onions, and mushrooms that's coated in flour. But I do feel like I need a little bit more oil in. Let's put some oil in and that's about two tablespoons, okay? You don't really have to measure it. Just get you some oil in there, okay? Beautiful, there we go. So it's a little bit more wet and you all can understand exactly what's happening here, okay? So now what we're gonna do, we are going to need three fourths of a cup. Of, we're going to need three fourths of a cup of beef broth. Okay, three fourths is right before you get to one cup. I want you all to put that in. All right. Everybody's got a huge conversation about mushrooms going on in the chat. <laughs> All right, here we go. Come on in, y'all. Here's where it gets really exciting. Three-fourths of a cup beef broth. All right, look at this. Look it, took it, look it, took it, took it, took it. All right, and beautiful. Yes, Gina. Oh, somebody's all excited right now. So since mine's is fairly thick, what I want to do, I don't want it that thick. And you don't want yours that thick either. Let's go ahead and add in, come on with the, with the camera, add in some more liquid so it's not so thick, okay? And then give it a nice stir, okay? No worries if it's thick like, like mine's is. You keep on adding a little bit more broth until it thins out, okay? And then we're going to be using some heavy cream to really thin it out. Okay, look at this. Ooh, wee. You something else. So, okay, so when it came to the three-fourths of a cup, looks like we might be using one and one-fourth of a cup of the beef broth. Okay, look at this. Look at this. So what happens from this point? See how we have this consistency, Derek? This is what I want yours to look like right now. Okay, go ahead. Add your beef in, okay? And then very quickly, we're gonna be adding the Worcestershire sauce. If you want to use the Dijon mustard in here, absolutely you can, okay? I use a little tiny bit of Dijon, okay? Beautiful, look at everything. It's looking great, right? You bet it is. That looks so flavorful. Oh, it is. It is. Okay. Since we're moving in the right direction, let's go ahead and put some Worcestershire sauce in. And when you put yours in, just put it into season. Just like we do the salt and the pepper. Let me show you how much I'm going to use. I took the whole lid off. About that much. Great flavor right there. Okay, and I'm going to use about a teaspoon or less of the Dijon mustard. Let me show you. That's it. That little bit, yes, that little bit. That little bit right there is going to make something amazing on your taste buds. That's if you like mustard. If you don't want to use mustard, you can totally leave it out of the recipe. Oh, wait, Gina, use something else. Okay, so look at that. If at any time your mixture, listen everybody, if at any time, just like I did, your mixture just doesn't seem thin enough, you keep adding the beef broth like I had to. 
That will sometimes happen when you're cooking, okay? Just keep adding the beef broth, okay? So now we're gonna stir in sour cream. We're also gonna use some heavy cream. Now the heavy cream is where it gets this beautiful color, right? So, I feel like I need a little bit more broth because Lil's a little thick. So um, we got 32 ounces of broth. We're gonna keep using it till we get a perfect consistency. How about we let it simmer for a good, nah, let's just say seven minutes. After seven, let me set my timer. <clears throat> Excuse me. After seven minutes is up, we're gonna come back we're gonna put heavy cream in. Sometimes it's called cream. Sometimes it's called heavy whipping cream. This is not cool whip, okay? This is a heavy cream. And a lot of times, wherever you live, if you can't find this, you can always use half and half. Half and half does the same thing that heavy cream does. So in seven minutes, we're gonna put this in, followed by sour cream, okay? So if the camera can come in and show everybody what we got going on. This doesn't look like dog food. <laughs> oh, wait, look at that. Somebody say yes. All right, so listen, I have to taste it. I don't know about you all, but I have to taste it. Can you all right, I'm stirring my noodles around. Can you use French onion dip instead of sour cream? French onion dip instead of sour cream. You can. You can. Absolutely you can. I don't see why you couldn't. All right, so I want to taste that. I want to see how flavorful it is. And look how thick. Gorgeous. I'm going in. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Flavor all in there. Ooh, flavor all in there. All right, so now I have this turnt on a medium. Don't have it up too high because it'll get too thick and it could possibly burn. Just turn it on medium and keep stirring it for the seven minutes, okay? All right, gorgeous. Remember, our next ingredients is gonna be a heavy cream and sour cream. When it comes to the sour cream, I want you all to put the desired amount of sour cream that you want in your recipe. You might like two tablespoons. You might be the person that just wants one tablespoon, but when I get to it, I'll show you how much I like to put into my recipe, okay? All right. So as you're doing different things in your kitchen, ingredients that you've already used, now is the perfect time to put them away and you know that you've used those ingredients, okay? So what I like to do as I use ingredients, I put those ingredients to the side and that lets me know I've used it already and I don't need it anymore, right? And it just helps me to keep everything nice and together and organized in my kitchen, right? Okay, we're moving in the right direction, everybody. Let me put this flour away. Welcome in if you're just now coming in. Make sure to give a thumbs up as you come in. If anybody has a serious question, I would love to be able to answer you right now. Let me see how everybody's doing. Uh-oh, somebody says, come on and hurry up. Let me see what's happening. <clears throat> My holy king, welcome back in. <laughs> Abby's joy of cooking, hello and welcome. Benny in the building, welcome in. I'm ready for the fall and pumpkin season, is that right? My goodness, pumpkin season already? I'm not, I'm not. I wish it could stay summer year round. I do, I do, because all I want to do is get in water. I want to get in some water. <laughs> I could, I could, listen, I could swim year round. I could take 80 something degrees all year round, every single day. That's the type of weather that I love. Oh, he sounds like your husband saying that. <laughs> Hi, Deborah, welcome in. <laughs> Oh, you said that y'all y'all really are kid. <laughs> All right, let's see how much time we got left. We got about three minutes. I'm gonna bring my noodles back into the equation. You can take a look at them. 
I do want to grab some parsley flakes just to make them nice and pretty. Let me show you what the parsley flakes does for the buttered noodles. It really turns them out, right? Like it looks spectacular with the green in it now, right? How easy was this recipe? Dina's house is the place to be. Absolutely it is. And I'm glad you all are here. Y'all, I love you all from the bottom of my heart. And I'm so grateful to have you here. Um, so I'm teaching you all how to make this amazing recipe. All right, just a few more minutes. We're gonna add heavy cream in. And when you put your, Dina, your seven minutes is up. No, let me see. I got two minutes. Um, oh, shoot, I forgot what I was gonna say. Someone said, are you gonna mix the noodles with the beef? Oh, are we gonna mix the noodles with the beef? Here's what I like to do. I'm just gonna show you how I like to do it. I like to serve my beef stroganoff on top of the noodles, right? So if you want to mix yours in, absolutely you can. I'm gonna use this dish and I wanna put my noodles in the bottom. I like to pour the sauce on top. And when you grab it, you're gonna be grabbing, you know, both. Um, I never really mix the two. I, I it, here's the thing. If I was serving this for my family, um, I have the noodles separate, the meat separate. But because I'm doing a live, I want to show you all how it is served. Let me go ahead, heat my potatoes up that I wanted to heat up. Okay, my time is up. Sonia, you ready? All right, here we go. Here we go, here we go. Heavy cream. Get you some in there, look how exciting. How much, Gina? Just put you some in there. This, this recipe is mistake free. It cannot go wrong. Okay, just pour about how much I put in. All right, it's gonna thin out the gravy. I know at one point everybody was worried like, man, it was fairly thick. Absolutely it was. But remember, we're putting more liquid in. Gorgeous, yes. <laughs> oh, look how exciting. Okay, so let's get this heavy cream nice and warmed up and you make the decision how much sour cream you want in yours. If you are a true fan of sour cream, you put in as much as you like. If you are okay with sour cream and you don't like a whole bunch, just use a tablespoon. But this recipe definitely calls for, um, beef stroganoff calls for sour cream. All right? I'm just gonna use about a tablespoon. Yum, Sonia says, Gina, this looks good. Is Saj here? Saj is here kicking in with Donna, how are you? Okay, so Dennis, you add some cornstarch with a little bit of water to the gravy and it will get thicker. Oh, thank you, uh, Catherine, for telling him that. All right, so come on, let's get our tablespoon or as much as you like. And that is a little bit more than a tablespoon, but get it in there. And so at this point, once you stir in your sour cream, Get ready to turn the dish off, yum. And if you're that person like Derek said, or whoever else was in the comment section, wondering can you put this in the crock pot, go ahead and just let it simmer. Your meat will get nice and tender. Look how spectacular. And guess what? You gotta taste it. You gotta taste it. We tasted it earlier, but all the ingredients went in it, right? But now we have all the ingredients. Go Taste the gravy. I know you want to taste the gravy. Y'all, listen, if you were in my kitchen, we'd be constantly tasting everything. I, I think I drive my husband nuts half the time. He's sitting outside, I'm bringing him a taste of this. He's doing this, I'm bringing him a taste. He's in the shower, I'm bringing him a taste. Baby, taste this. And he's like, are you kidding me? Taste it, taste it, taste it. The best thing that you can do when you're cooking at your house is taste your food so you know but you're feeding to your family and friends and loved ones. My potatoes are done. If you want to serve yours over top of mashed potatoes, you can. Serve it over top of noodles. I like the noodles. I'm going in. Mm -hmm. mm. 
It's so good. It's so good. If you don't like me scrolling off, you'll like it now. Oh, you will love it. My potatoes are done. Let's get our noodles. Go ahead and turn this off because it's done. What do you suggest for people that are lactose intolerant? What do I suggest for people that are lactose intolerant? I don't know right now. <laughs> I really honestly don't know right now. So I'm gonna have a hard time answering that. I'll have to do research on what's the best thing for you. I do believe, don't quote me on this, but I do believe there's all kinds, like there's a heavy whipping cream that you should be able to find that's plant-based and uh, lactose-free. So when you go to your local market or even look online where you can shop online, look at the item and see if you can find lactose-free heavy cream, right? You should be able to nowadays. And also the same thing with the sour cream. Look and see. Go to Instacart, go to Walmart shopping, and just simply click on the product, look at it, and see if you can find them in lactose-free. Anymore, you can find a ton of stuff that's lactose-free, okay? Could you add cornstarch to lactose-free milk to make it thicker? Could you add cornstarch? This is Robert. Could you add cornstarch? to lactose-free milk to make it thicker. You, you may be able to. That also might be a question that I'm not sure of. I'm just not sure right now. And, and I, I'm the first person to tell you all, I'm not gonna give you an answer if I don't really know the answer. I'm gonna tell you I don't know or look it up. <laughs> all right, so here's how it's done. Take a look, come on in. Somebody come in. So we got gorgeous buttered noodles. Heck yeah, we do. All right, and we got sauce. Sauce is the boss. <laughs> the sauce is the boss. You bet it is. All right, look at that. Oh my goodness. Okay, let me clean this up just a little bit. I know, I just said the sauce is the boss. <laughs> I know I just said that. <laughs> All right, a little bit of parsley flakes to make it nice and pretty. Come on in. We have beef stroganoff. Make you some. <laughs> make you some, Gina Young style. You won't be let down by this here recipe. How simple, how quick was it made? And for the people that's cooking with me, let me know what you think. Let me know. Come on in. Come on in. So they can see. Now it's the perfect time to clean up your kitchen, if need be. I can't rest until I know that my kitchen is nice and clean. I'm going to wipe the cooktop down. We're going to say an amazing prayer. After the prayer, we're going to eat. And we'll chit chat for a while. Okay, we got mashed potatoes. If anyone desires to have this over mashed potatoes, you can. All right, let's pray. Okay, Christopher. All right, Christopher. Shantia. Sh Shanti Shantia Savory. Okay, Nicole Stucco, Gina. Lisa's health don't like mushrooms. She wants to know, is there another veggie to add? Okay, so Lisa, you just leave the mushrooms out. Leave the mushrooms out and it'll be just fine. Great question, you can always, thank you, Sonia. Oh, Susan made me some. All right, y'all, how about a great prayer? Heavenly Father, we thank you on today for the special day today. I thank you for my extended family, my extended family that's in this chat today. I pray, Heavenly Father, that you bless over each and every one of them. Thank you, Lord, for your mercy, your love, time, and your understanding. 
Please forgive us all for our sins in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for everything you do and everything you will do in our lives. Heavenly Father, thank you for this gift that you've given me to share with this world. I'm going to share it, and I'm going to always do it with God on our side. Heavenly Father, you can and you will do. We can and we will do all things through Christ who strengthens us. Please forgive us for our sins. Lord, we need you in our lives. We can't do anything in life without you. Thank you for the roof over our head, the food, the love, peace, and the joy you bring us every day. Amen. Amen. Yes, I could beep in it. Uh-huh. Bon appetit. All right, let's get a plate. We're going to eat, and then we're going to chit-chat. I'm not going to eat a lot, but I'm going to eat some because this is good. Uh-uh. Watch me make a plate. You just watch. Mm-mm-mm. This is a meal to ride home about. If you love beef stroganoff, you're going to love, love, love this here recipe. Mm -hmm. Yes. Amen. Thank you for the amens. All right. We're going to have some fun. I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you what it looks like. And you're going to get to taste it. I have some potatoes here. I can't have potatoes in the house and not eat a little bit of them. Just a little bit because I don't need a whole lot. <laughs> I'm outside the door, Benji. <laughs> All right. Time to chit chat. Time to have fun. Welcome if you're just now coming in. The cooking has been done already. Prince and Polo want a plate. Gina, I'm at your door, says Derek. <laughs> Prince and Polo, I don't know if you can hear them barking. They're in the basement, and they are barking because they heard me say the end of the prayer. They did. They heard me. <laughs> yeah, the dog wants up. <laughs> they so spoiled. They are so spoiled. All right. Amen. 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 How about we try this? That's when they know it's done. They do. They do. They so stink and spoil. All right. Look at this. Beef stroganoff. That is what yours should look like. How gorgeous is the plate? How gorgeous is the plate, first of all? I had to get some potatoes. Thank you, Latrice. Look, 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 look. <laughs> now for the taste test. Okay, looks good. Thank you. Let's do it. All right. Let me turn the microphones off. All right, somebody out there wanted to know what beef stroganoff looks like. What does it taste like? This is what it looks like. And we're getting ready to taste. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. mm. mm. Y'all, listen. I didn't play around when I made this recipe. Oh! Mm. Hold on, y'all. Dog on it. I know. Hold on. Did I get it on my shirt? My goodness. Hold on. Is it all over me, Dakota? Look and see. Look on me. <laughs> okay. There's a piece on the floor for the dogs. Look at this. Look how. Look at. That's good spillage. <laughs> look at the noodle. And have socks off, Sonya. <laughs> Great. Look at how the noodles is coated. Mm. Now, there was fairly a lot of people that was saying, is it going to be, is the meat going to be tender? 
Let's just check out and see. This is a big piece. This ain't no little scrawny piece. Uh huh. Mmm. 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 Mm -hmm. Listen. It's not. Mmm. 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 The meat is perfect. Mmm. That piece of meat is gone. If this was tender, I mean, if this was dry or tough, it wouldn't be gone. That piece of meat is gone. Right? Look at this. Mm, mm, mm. <laughs> ah, mm. Tracy has a question. Okay, Tracy, let me see what you got. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I dropped it. Let's see where Tracy is. Gina, I have a question. What's your question, Tracy? When frying pork chops, is it okay to fry them in olive oil? Well, here's what I like to say. Olive oil burns at a high temperature. So I'd like to say I wouldn't fry your pork chops in olive oil. You can use an uh, avocado. If you're looking for a healthier version of an oil, use an avocado oil to fry your pork chops in. Okay, so olive oil burns at a high temperature. I just wouldn't use it for frying because the um, pork chops need to cook up on a high heat and they need to cook for so long, you don't want your olive oil to burn. So the next healthiest would be avocado oil. I'm flying to Gina's house. <laughs> I told y'all on Wednesday. <laughs> mm. Y'all listen. Look, look at that. Look at that meat right there and the noodle. Mm, 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 mm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Listen, if you don't mind mushrooms, thank you, my holy king. If you don't mind mushrooms, if you, if you just don't mind them, because some people don't like them, the mushrooms is amazing in here. It is great with the onions and the garlic and the sour cream. Now, this has a sour, somewhat of a sour taste because we add sour cream to it, but it's beautiful. Mm, 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 mm. Mm, mm. Mm, mm. <laughs> That's what people do when it tastes good. Sometimes anything's liable to, to happen. Dancing, singing, tapping your foot on the ground. Oh, you think it's considered to be Italian? I'm going to have to look that up and see. I definitely, I'm curious. T-Love, what is your question? Yeah, not sour, just tangy, just a little bit. There's a big piece, there's a big piece of beef. Look at that beef, y'all. Mm -hmm. What you think about the recipe? Yeah, he, say it so the people can hear. It's really good. He said it's really good, y'all. I did. I smacked the table. I had to. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. I'm so happy with this recipe. Mm. And like I said, don't you dare worry. If you're making a Gina Young style, don't you worry about that beef being, being tough. Because it ain't going to be tough. If you followed everything that I did, the meat will not be tough. Can somebody see how well coated that noodle is in the gravy? Oh, what about canola oil? What you're gonna need to do, Nancy, is go to your local market to find out what cooking oil is best for you. Um, if you didn't wanna use avocado oil um and olive oil isn't good for you look in your market 
And when you go in that aisle, turn the oils around. See what's best for you. If you need less saturated fat, like what do you need? Like, I, cause I don't know your health needs. And then I'm not a doctor, you know? So look at the back of the oils to see what oil is best for you. And, but just know that olive oil cooks at a high, does not cook at a high temperature. Gina, I tried Beyond, let me see. Gina, I tried Beyond Steak the other day and it was pretty good. Yes, you did it. It was a beef teriyaki and it was so good. I put it over jasmine rice, yum. Y'all, the, um, uh, what are they called again? Beyond, Beyond Burgers, Beyond Steak, Beyond Sausages and stuff like that. I think that they are delicious. Oh, oh yeah, I'll just have to step in and tell you. I think they're delicious and I have tried them. Me and Dakota like their hamburgers. Oh, is it beyond? No, we like the impossible. I'm sorry, let me quote, let me let me change that. We like the impossible hamburgers. They are just as delicious as a regular hamburger. The beyond, we haven't had the beyond. But we have had the impossible, and they are delicious. Absolutely, they are. Okay, Susan says, this is my first time cooking with you, delicious. Oh my goodness, that's great. Hey, from New York, and you're cooking with D. welcome. What is the bean burger that you had? I made a bean burger and it's in my playlist. You'll have to check it out. You'll, you'll love the recipe. Y'all listen, look, 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 look. Mm. 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 In my buffering, somebody said that it was buffering. I hope I'm not. Can you look on our computer to see if this channel is buffering? Mm, mm, mm. Y'all, the meat is so tender. Y'all know I can't eat a whole lot of noodles, but the meat, it is so stinking tender. Look at that. No, it's, not mm. it's not buffering over here. Mmm, mmm. No buffering? Okay. Mm -hmm. Glenda. <laughs> what is the, your name? What is your name? Let me see. Your name is Minith. Minith. What is your favorite food or meal, by the way? I love you. Well, I'd like to say I love you too. Um, one of my favorite foods is barbecued ribs. Uh-huh. And I like uh, Puerto Rican food. I love Puerto Rican food. I love Chinese food. I love ribs. <laughs> yes. But there's so many foods that I love. I love hog milks. I know, I know it's gonna start up a whole conversation, but I love hog milks if I can find them. I don't know where I can find them. No, I don't. She got an accent like Jill Scott. <laughs> oh, Latricia said I like ribs too. Oh, no buffering, okay. Yes, you're right. Be careful with the sodium in the Impossible Burgers. You are absolutely right. There he goes. <laughs> Hog log is the actual stomach. 
the pork stomach, but it's good. It's good. It tastes good. <laughs> My favorite fast food restaurant. Okay, I have to really think about that. Um, uh, my favorite fast food restaurant. My favorite fast food restaurant would have to be Chinese takeout. Um, because when I think of things like Burger King, McDonald's, Taco Bell, and all that stuff, I just... Yeah, you know, uh, I, I when I was younger, I would always say Arby's because I love the Arby's beef and cheddar, right? But as I got older, I'm like the heck with Arby's beef and cheddar. So I, I know it's not considered take uh, fast food Chinese, but I'm gonna stick with Chinese. <laughs> Oh, fresh cracklings. That sounds good. Okay. The fast food restaurant re restaurant you've gone to the most in a month. Okay, even though we went there, don't mean I like it. <laughs> so how do I answer that? You know, because a lot of times when we're out and about and we're moving, we're running errands and doing different things, we'll stop at McDonald's. We'll stop at White Castle's. But doesn't mean I'm happy with it, yo. It doesn't, because any more McDonald's just not, I don't know, it's cold. It's cold and they just serve it to you any type of way. It, it's got to be fresh. When it's fresh, it can be good. I can't answer that, because I ain't had no good fast food in a minute. <laughs> I wish I could answer Oh, you said Chick-fil-A, please. Uh... We went to Chick-fil-A and we wasn't a fan of it. I know that's nuts. The world loves Chick-fil-A. But what if I went and I didn't have a good experience? Okay, good question. What is a food that I don't like? I don't like carrots. I don't like carrots. I, do, I can make them taste good, but I'm not a fan of carrots. Um, I'm not a fan of, I hate to say this. Um, I'm going to leave that out. I don't like carrots. Carrots kind of, it's something about carrots that I don't like. Oh, I heck no, I like carrot cake. Gina, I'm making your grilled salad, steaks, kebab. Oh, on the grill for 4th of Jan July. That's nice. Okay, so you don't like... Oh, bananas. Derek, <laughs> Derek helped me to remember what I don't like. I don't like bananas over everything. <laughs> That's right. Derek, thank you. <laughs> Derek helped me to remember. <laughs> I, only thing I could think of was carrots, so I don't like bananas over everything. Mm -mm. I don't like bananas. Raw bananas. You can't get me to eat a raw banana. Now, if I put them in something like a homemade banana pudding, they're delicious. Absolutely it's delicious. Right? Or if I'm making like a banana pudding. Uh, I just said that. If I'm making like a banana candy or something. Banana bread. I like it that way. But just to peel a banana and eat it, oh, no, you got to kill me. Uh-uh, uh-uh. So Derek is right. He was right. <laughs> the bananas and then the carrots. That's what I don't like. Everything else I think I like. <laughs> oh, Susan says, me neither, no carrots. It's something about a carrot that I don't like, y'all. I tell you what I want again. Remember, I just recently did a video or a live showing you all how to make lima beans. Those lima beans were so delicious. I want to make more. I want to make a big pot tonight. I like peanut butter. Oh, you don't like peanut butter? <laughs> I don't mind peanut butter. It's okay. 
So Myra says, I like carrots raw. If you cook it with, let's see, if you cooked with crunch carrots, natural sweet, when you cook, they get more sweet. Yeah, I don't, Myra, I don't feel you on that. It's the carrot that I don't like. My husband has a funny story about when he was younger. He was asking somebody about, he, cause I'm talking about when he was younger, younger. He wanted to get, this is when he was younger. He wanted to get muscles and somebody had told him, if you eat carrots. He said, man, I had my grandma buying carrots every day. <laughs> he said he ate all these carrots. <laughs> he said somebody told him the carrots is going to give you all these muscles. He said he had his grandma buying carrots galore. <laughs> oh, you don't like liver. I like liver. <laughs> yeah, you don't like what you don't like. Lima beans, it is good. I know, Sonia. I love the GIF. Oh, let me ask you this. Have y'all had the peanut butter that has the honey in it? The peanut butter that has the honey in it is beautiful. It's so good. I could just put it on a cracker and eat it that way. Or on, see, when I make a sandwich, I make a sandwich with one piece of bread because that's all I can really have. I only need one piece of bread, but I'll put it on there and fold it over. I love peanut butter that has the honey in it. Oh, peanut butter with honey, gotta get it. Yes, you gotta get it, it's so good. Oh my God, and, and and you can taste the honey. It's just a little hint of sweetness, but you can tell it's honey in there. It's the best thing since sliced bread. It is so good. The flavor of carrots change when it's cooked. Yes, Jared, yes. You don't like black eyed peas? Oh my God, hold on, let me see who this is. Miss B. You gotta try on Gina Young style. You don't like black eyed peas? Oh my goodness. I, I know Mildred, it's so funny. Yes, Denise says, I was a little worried about my gravy. Never worry about the gravy because it will eventually come together. Remember, in the beginning, it will be thick. You keep on adding liquid and you stirring. You keep on adding liquid and you're stirring. You're putting more broth or water in. It eventually comes together. That's why I tell people when you're making gravy, don't you worry. It'll always turn out and just like yours did. Where do you get the peanut butter with honey? Anywhere, anywhere, your local market, where they have all the different types of peanut butter, they have that one. And also I like the peanut butter that has the jelly in the same jar. I like that. I like it. It's so delicious. I, I know I love black eyed peas. Okay, so uh, you okay, so Robert says on Sundays growing up, my mother would go all out on Sunday dinner. Chicken and dressing and fried apples, pento beans, rice, fried chicken, biscuits with gravy. Gina, what would be dinner? Okay, on Sundays, I'm different. <laughs> I just have to tell you, and it's the God's honest truth. On Sundays, we rest. On Sundays, we don't do a doggone thing. We attend church, uh, you know, online church, and I like to watch two churches online, okay? So I'm doing that in pajamas. Sometimes I'm cooking while I'm listening to church, um, and I'll get a nice shower. Me and my husband will sit outside, have coffee on the deck out back. And then for the rest of the day, we are relaxing in the bed, doing zero, absolutely nothing. Because we like to keep the Sabbath day holy and really not do anything on Sundays. So we don't record on Sundays. We don't edit any videos. We don't do zilch on Sundays. So that's how we like to do our Sundays, doing nothing. So when it comes to the food, I don't cook. I, you know, I might make something, but I'm not getting down in the kitchen because I'm getting down every day of the week in the kitchen, right? And so Sunday, you want a day where you are resting. And I think Sunday's the perfect day for us. Um, so if I were to make something on a Sunday, I might make hamburgers, <laughs> just some juicy hamburgers. Um, 
maybe a pot of beans with um, cornbread or I mean we may order like Bob Evans we could order Bob Evans and order their turkey their dressing their macaroni and some green beans and we got dinner but we try to do as least as we can on Sundays okay Derek, why do you say that, Drew? Let me see what Derek is. Yes, 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 but I do. Okay, so Lady Linda says, but the Sabbath is Saturday. But I, I do my Sabbath on Sunday. Let's see. Oh, that's because he says sardines and peanut butter. Ain't no way. Don't nobody believe that, Derek. I don't know about that. Hold on, y'all. got a message. Okay, well, let's see what they're talking about. FICO. FICO. Okay. See the new score. My goodness. Hold on. My updated score. Okay, okay, FICO. You just keep on doing what you're doing. <laughs> um, let's see. Absolutely, my holy king. I like to say that. You said the Lord's day is every day. You're right about that. Absolutely. That's how I like to look at it. Do you like green lima beans? I do. My dad introduced me to green lima beans, the frozen kind, uh, when I was a teenager. And he would cook his salt and pepper and garlic powder, right? Some, some, some water in the pan. Salt, pepper, and garlic powder and bacon. And I think he would put just a pinch of sugar in there. Those green beans are the best things ever. So I do enjoy those green beans. Yes. Yeah, that was FICO. Always get a little nervous when they text me. They, you know, they, you know, because they text you like five days a week. <laughs> and when they got something to say, I'm like, what is it? <laughs> what are you getting ready to do? Right? So I'm always on edge when I open up that app. <laughs> what are they getting ready to say? <laughs> Gina, if you could actually go back in time, what age would you be again for one day? Oh my goodness. Uh, what a crazy question. What age would I be? Hold on, let me fix the messages. What age would you be for one day? <laughs> I don't know. Um, I, I, I really don't know. I don't know how to answer that. I, I don't know. I, I absolutely don't know. <laughs> Lena says 23. <laughs> Hold on. Let me make sure I read your thing right. Okay. Because she says she would. Are you saying would I? Or you said, Gina, if you could go back in time, what age would you be again for one day? Oh, yeah. I See, I don't, I don't know. I don't know how to answer that. <laughs> Glenda, Glenda, that is so funny. Glenda says 17 with no bills. <laughs> I know that's right. Maybe I can answer the question now. <laughs> no, um, I, I don't know how to answer that. I really don't know how to answer that question. Because when I answer something, I want to I wanna be for sure about my answer. When you were growing up, what did you always want to do as a career? My goodness. Great question. Oh, y'all got, got some good ones going on today. When I was growing up, what did I always want to do as a career? Here's what I can say. I feel like I wanted to be some type of like a doctor or a nurse 
right? Like, I feel like that's what I want it to do. But then I can also sit here and tell you that I loved cooking until my heart was content, right? Like cooking was my everything, always. It's always been embedded in me, right? I don't know if I wanted to be a cook. I feel like I possibly, it's, it's such a hard question. It's a hard question. Um, I feel like I wanted to be in the medical field. Let's see, how do I want to answer this? But since I was teeny tiny, and I mean teeny tiny, waist height, I feel like cooking is what I wanted to do. So you could kind of, you know, it's funny because if y'all, if you ever met my sister, my sister would say things like, she would say things like this to me. She would say, you were supposed to be a doctor. You were supposed to be a nurse, right? Like she would ask me medical questions and I knew it. Or she would ask me certain things and I knew what it was. I knew what the medicine was. I know how to treat it, right? Because I'm interested in medical stuff like that. Like I'm so interested. But I always knew that I wasn't getting ready to be no doctor. I knew I always wasn't getting ready to be nobody's nurse, right? But I think maybe I like that stuff. I like that field. But I knew that I wasn't getting ready to be nothing in the medical field, right? So I, I think that's how I would answer it. But I, so, so I think I had more hopes for something in the cooking field. Because, I, I, you know, I went to culinary art school in high school. So, uh, that's, that's how it is. And, and like I said, my sister, she used to call me. She'd be like, so this and this is going on. So what do you, I'd be like, okay, this and that. And this is how they would treat it. This is what is going on. They're going to give you this type of medicine, right? This and that. Or you're going to go to the doctors. They're going to say this, this and that. It's like, it's like medical stuff is somehow in me. Like I, like I used to be, <laughs> like I used to be a doctor in my past life or something. <laughs> it's weird. Gina, would you rather travel the world for a year? All ex Okay, hold on, T-Love. That's a good one. Would you rather travel the world for a year? All expenses paid. Or have fifty thousand to spend on whatever you want. Um, would you rather travel the world for a year, or have fifty thousand to spend on whatever you want? Um, I would always like to um, add to the bank, so I would choose that. And then you can travel different places whenever, you know. So I would have to choose to put more money into the bank. <laughs> That's what I would choose. <laughs> they do, Drew. They got some good questions. Okay, okay, you, okay. Okay, so T. Love said I would travel because I can make memories. <laughs> And people are saying, travel, travel, travel. Not me. I'm always about putting some money in the bank. <laughs> the heck with traveling. <laughs> we can always travel later. Let's get some money in the bank. <laughs> Newsflash. If you get 18000 for 1982 penny on it. I can't. Well, I don't know what that message says. Oh, you like traveling. Sonia said travel. <laughs> there you go, Angela. Angela says, I'll take the money. I have memory of putting that money in my account. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay, Gina, when you deal with food, it does have a strong side of being health. Okay, hold on. Gina, when you deal with food, 
it does have a strong side of being healthy. So you differently have your thoughts correct because that's exactly what I wanted to do. You love to serve the people's need. I, 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 I do. I love to serve. And Myra said, me too. My, Myra said, me too, Gina. <laughs> Money comes and goes. Oh my goodness. I'm all about, <laughs> I, I'd rather, I'd rather make money than, than travel the world. I would, I would, you can try, you can travel where you want to later. I'm not one of those people that has aspirations. Is that the right word I want to use? I'm not one of those people that wants to travel the world. I'm just not, I don't, I want to, um, like, I don't want to, I'm not one of those people that want to travel the world. And I can totally understand for the people in here that's saying, travel the world, Tina, you wouldn't want to travel the world? No. <laughs> I don't want to travel the world. But there are a couple places that I, I would love to go to, right? Absolutely, there are some places. And the places that I would like to go would be because they have absolutely amazing food. I would love to go just to try their food and then come right back home, <laughs> right? And then come back right back home and get to uh, life <laughs> and what you need to do in life so you can stay afloat. Hold on, I need to fix my messages, y'all. Hold on. Okay. Good night, Eula. Thank you for coming in. Oh, me too, Christopher. Christopher said, Gina, I will go just to try the food. Me too. Oh, explore God's green earth. Absolutely. And, and like I said, I understand for the people that want to do that. Is there a troll above? I don't know, Derek. Is it? If you were told. Okay, hold on. Let me see. Okay, if you were told you couldn't cook anymore, what would you do? <laughs> if I was told I couldn't cook anymore, what would I do? Um, hmm. If I was told I couldn't cook anymore, what would I do? Uh, I don't know. I don't know what I would do. <laughs> Mildred said, Ron gets a troll. <laughs> you said, sing what I sing? No, I wouldn't sing. I wouldn't sing. Um, I don't know what I would do. <laughs> Chrissy said, would you sing or dance? <laughs> I, neither one. <laughs> neither one. What reality show would you go on? Survivor or Amazing Grace? Neither one. I wouldn't go on a reality show. I, I don't know. I don't know if I have, if I, I don't know if I would go on a reality show. My goodness. I don't know what Shazam is. Oh, okay. Hold on. T-Love, you know that's funny. T-Love says, would you rather have more time? or more money. What do you mean when you say more time? You mean more time on this earth or more money? I'm gonna start off by answering the question. <laughs> more money. <laughs> the heck with the time? No, I'm just playing. But <laughs> more money. <laughs> more money, I think that's my, I think that would be my answer. <laughs> Christopher says both. Uh, okay, Derek says, I want both. And thank you, Denise. Christy says, uh, okay, Christy. Oh, you say time because time is more valuable. Okay. Okay. And that's a great answer. It's a great answer. <laughs> Hello, Pauline. Thank you for coming in. <laughs> Lorraine is laughing at me. Lorraine is just laughing at me. <laughs> uh, 
Okay, okay, you said you can always make more money, but you can never get time back. Okay, okay. <laughs> These are good questions. Okay, okay. I, I like the questions today. This is different, but I like it. <laughs> if you were on an island all by yourself, what are the five things you would want to have to survive? Okay. Water. Hey. Water. Food. God. Water, food, God. Is that something you're bringing? Hold on. He's always there. With Hold you. on, Dakota. Water, food, God. Air. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> I see a bed. <laughs> Be. Yeah, ask me too quick. I know, I know the three would be water, food, and God. <laughs> fire, fire and shelter. Wow. That might be that might be the next two. <laughs> yes, Mildred. Mildred, your answer is right. <laughs> Uh-oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. Derek says, it is the love of money that's the root of all evil. Oh, my goodness. My goodness. Don't think just because. I, I, I don't know. That, that's going to be a tough conversation. Now, just because I say that I would like to make money over traveling the world, don't think that it's like the love of money. I just know that you need money. <laughs> I would rather have money than travel the world. I have no interest in traveling the world. <laughs> Gina, would you take a trip to outer space in a space? Heck no! Would you take a space? Do you, hold on. Would you take a trip to outer space in a space shuttle? No. I don't need to go to outer space. I don't need to go in the abyss, in the sea. I don't need to go far down in the sea. I don't need to travel to outer space for nothing. I, I, uh-uh, uh-uh, ain't no way. Mm-mm. Uh-uh, <laughs> uh -uh. I don't want to go. I don't want to go to nobody's sea, deep diving, <laughs> or outer space. Uh-uh. Get into a submarine. I don't want to do anything like that. No. How about to the moon? No. <laughs> no. None of that interests me. <laughs> I'll be doing this. I'll be cooking live. That's what I want to do. I want to cook live and make videos. <laughs> Thank you, T-Love. Oh, you made that pineapple upside down cake. Oh, and everybody loved it. Oh, that sounds so good. I want to make one. Yum. Oh, thank you, Thomas. Welcome back in. <laughs> Aliens eating Gina Young style food on Mars. Oh, wait. Oh, wait. Sonia said, I know that's right. Yeah, that's what they're saying, but it's okay. It's okay whether they take it wrong or, or right. You know, you can't. It's okay. <laughs> yes, absolutely, Lorraine. Yes, Miss B. Oh, Derek said, I'd be afraid to go on the space shuttle. Yeah, no thanks. 
I don't want to go see nobody's moon. I don't want to go experiment and see if there's mar what do you call them? Martians or aliens or, or aliens or anything. I don't want to go find out if any of that is real. I don't I I, I have no interest in that, y'all. Let me see. Is there a hidden talent you have we don't know about? Let me think about that. Let me think about that. Not that I can, not that I can think of, uh, not that I can think of. <laughs> There's something, but not that I can think of. <laughs> Not that I want to, that not that I not that I want to share with you all. <laughs> not that I could think of. <laughs> Tracy said, "I know that's right." <laughs> Do you want to go to the moon? Heck no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Latricia says, "Go out of space and never come back." Oh, that is scary. Right. That's why. Uh, uh I don't want to go see what they got up there. Whatever they got up there can stay up there. You know, aliens, if they're up there, they can stay up there. Um, mm -mm, mm -mm. Anything in the sea, it can stay in there. Uh-uh. Mm -mm. <laughs> Angela, you know that question is funny. Angela, you know that question is funny. <laughs> Latricia says, me either, Gina. Hello, Miss Karen. How are you? Good night, Mildred. Thank you for coming in and joining us today. We appreciate having you in here. And Mimi says, I'll take their word. <laughs> I don't. I don't want to go. I don't want to go. You can't make me go. Gina, do you like to fly on planes? So, um... Yeah, that's good. Um, so me and my husband been on a plane one time together. It was nice. It was a great experience. It was just like once that, if for those of you that, um, let me bring the camera close to me. Turn the air off, Dakota. I'm freezing. My goodness, it's cold in here. Can you turn the air down? Uh, so once the airplane got going, it was like soon as it, for those of you that haven't rode an airplane before, as soon as that baby get up off the ground, you're like this. I mean, gravity just pull you back. We like, right? There's nothing like we're we just stuck like this for a minute. And when you get off, you have like a, a little neck cramp because it's just so much. It's like it's like it just sucked you back like this, and you like that for a minute until you really get up there and then you can relax. Um, it was a fun experience. It, it was fun. Oh, here's a good one. Oh, no issues with flying, Sonya. Okay. Okay, so T Love says, would you rather have everyone be able to read your thoughts or have access to your internet history? Would you rather have everyone... Would you rather have everyone be able to read your thoughts or everyone have access to your internet history? Uh, I guess I'd say read my thoughts. And the reason why I would say my internet history is because I don't want any ha anybody, any hackers to have my internet information. Right? So that's why I would say my, my thoughts. And that's a good question. I'd have to say my thoughts because I don't want you to be able to hack my internet. <laughs> Let me see. Derek says, read thoughts. I wouldn't want anybody <laughs> want my business too. <laughs> 
Uh oh, reading my th uh oh, my holy king says reading my thoughts, people will get their feelings hurt. Oh wait. Do you like cruisers? I don't even know what a cruiser is. So my husband asked this question before. He said, hold on, let me fix this. My husband said, so if you could have a, like a superpower, what would your superpower be? And I told him that my superpower would be um, that I could, what did I say? Oh, I said, my, if I could have two superpowers, this is what my superpowers would be. If I could uh, be invisible and read minds. I told my husband that he died laughing. He just cracked up. He laughed so hard. He said, that's cause you nosy. He said, you are so nosy. He said, I ain't never heard of nobody that wants a superpower like that. Want to be invisible. <laughs> he said, normally, he said, a normal person, <laughs> listen what he told me. He said, a normal person's superpower, they would want to be able to fly. <laughs> he said, but not you. He said, you nosy. He was like, you want to be invisible. He said, why you want to be invisible? <laughs> He just laughed when I say that. I did. I did, Buffalo. I said invisible and read my. He said, oh, you are so nosy. <laughs> he said, I never heard nobody want, want that for superpowers. I said, but that's my, that's what I would want for a superpower. Huh? What is it? No, it's not. <laughs> is it funny? <laughs> No, it has to cook longer. <laughs> okay, so people are says hi. I watched this whole stream, and you earned a new sub. That food looked delicious, and I just about made it myself. Oh my goodness! Well, welcome in, people are question mark. Thank you for coming in and joining. It's so great to have you here with us. And let me tell you this. It, once you're here, you can't get away. You're with me. You're with me. And listen, I will be going live 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on Monday, okay? So you can join us on Monday. You can join us on Wednesday at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time and at 4 o'clock on Saturday. So, hey, welcome in. Thank you for coming in. Great to have you with us, people are. <laughs> Gina, I made your turkey burger last night. It was amazing. Oh, great. Gina, can you do the eat beef while... Oh, uh oh yeah, remember, informed. You asked me last week, you said, can you eat beef while looking at a cow? I forgot to ask my husband about that, but I thought that was the craziest question ever. Gina, can you eat chicken while watching chickens just run around in front of you? I don't know. <laughs> I think that is such a funny question. But I tell you what, I'm definitely a person, and this might sound totally nuts. I'm not a fan of milk. <laughs> I'm Let's see. Sorry for the awkward username. It just said, oh no, your username is okay. Uh, I don't mind, the username's fine. Everybody has a username and some usernames is totally, you know, crazy, but yours is okay. Um, oh, but milk, when I think about where milk comes from, I just get sick to my stomach. I'm not a fan of milk to see it to have seen it come out of the cow's udder. I mean, I know that's where it comes from. But then I think about how dirty the cow's udder is. It just makes me kind of sick when I see, or just the thought of how, where the milk comes from. I just want to, something about milk makes me sick. And also something about eggs makes me sick to know that it's the baby chicken. Ah, I like to make eggs. I do. And I make the best eggs you've ever had in your life. 
and I'll eat a little bit. But if I think about it too much, I get sick. <laughs> I get sick on the thought of what eggs is and where milk has came from. I know, I know. And to be a cook, shame on me, right? But I do. I know, I know. <laughs> <laughs> you know how them eggs come out. Okay, let me see. Gina, do you make candies like chocolate fudge or peanut brittle? Absolutely, I do. I make fudge, and I have um, a couple videos showing you how to make fudge. I made a strawberry fudge and a chocolate fudge. Be, uh, feel free to check out the video. Gina, have you ever milked a cow before? <laughs> no, I don't want to. <laughs> I like milk in recipes, but I don't pour a glass of milk. See, that's me. My husband likes milk. Dakota likes milk. They can just put ice in it and drink it. And I, ah, ah, not me. So if I, let's just say, I got a nice bowl of cereal. I got a nice bowl of cereal, my favorite cereal, right? And I put a lot of cereal in my bowl. I got this much milk in. Mm -mm, just this much milk and I got the cereal up here my husband when he makes a bowl of cereal so he got this much cereal he got this much milk and I'm like oh no mm -mm. <laughs> and I tell him I have to tell him if he make me a bowl of cereal I say please don't don't put a lot of milk in there uh-uh because I'm not the kind that when I after my cereal is done I want to drink the bowl of milk oh no that's too much Mm -mm. Whatever milk is left, it stays there. I don't drink it. Let, let me see. Gina, what are you making on Monday? I don't, I don't know yet. I was talking to my husband, and he had told me uh, that he didn't want <laughs> uh, 4th of July food. So I'm thinking we might do something else. So we'll see. So I, I just don't know. I had plans on barbecuing, but I just don't know what we gonna do now? Cause he kind of changed my plans up. You're like me on that with the milk, yeah. Milk is good for your bones. It, it, they say, but nowadays, Christopher, they say the milk is not good for you anymore. Remember back in the days, they used to say milk does a body good. But now come to find out milk don't do a body good anymore. How about that? Oh, what about wings? Let me see, Purple Love, welcome in Purple Love. I, I like dark chocolate, but they are saying not good for you anymore. Is that right? They always said the dark chocolate was good for you. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> but are they saying that it's not anymore? They used to always say milk does a body good. Milk is good for you. Vitamin D. And now uh, they say milk ain't good for you. And she's saying, and Purple Love is saying, they're saying dark chocolate ain't good anymore. You don't like chocolate covered cherries? Um, I don't know if I've ever had a chocolate covered cherry. Cherry cordial ice cream is really good. Ooh, Miss B says a lot of milk in my cereal. Not me. Oh, Drew Ma, see you later. Thank you for coming in. Oh, you like, uh, see, I can, I can eat dark chocolate. I can, but I prefer milk chocolate. I prefer milk chocolate. I love, and I like white chocolate too. Good night, Drew. Oh, well, you said one ounce of dark chocolate is good. That's what they say. Okay. Good night, Drew. Thank you for coming in and joining. Is that right? No dark chocolate anymore. I, so there's a chocolate that I like. I have to really think of what chocolate it is that is just so silky and smooth and just beautiful. But I love milk chocolate. Milk chocolate that just melts in your mouth. That's the kind of chocolate I like. Whole chocolate is the best, they say. Oh, okay. The incredible edible egg is so much incredible. <laughs> Let me see. That's so funny. The incredible edible egg isn't so incredible anymore either. Is that right? Oh, it, it might be Lent Lindor chocolate, like my Holy King said. It could be that. But it's so, like, like you put, you eat the chocolate and it, it just dissipates. It's just gone. 
I like that type of chocolate. Cadbury eggs, heck no. And the reason why is because they're so sweet. When I was younger, we liked them. You open them up and you got, it looks like a, a, a chicken egg in the middle, but it's too sweet. Adia says, I love any chocolate. Oh, Dove chocolate too, Jared. Yeah, um, Dove chocolate too. It does that same thing. <clears throat> yes, that's a smooth chocolate. Yeah, world's fine. Yep, 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 yep. Yep, um, yeah, my face was real oily today. I know what I'm going to do. You know, I'm sorry I missed your live chat, but I will wind it and watch it later. Oh, it's okay, Reginald. Thank you for coming in and joining today. Is your name Reginald or, or Ronald? Oh, Ronald, okay. <laughs> I have to do this when my face is oily to soak up some of the oil on my face. It definitely soaks up the oil as my face sweats. Gina, do you like hot pretzels? I love hot pretzels. And I like the Annie's hot pretzels, or the kind you can get at the mall. I do. I like to dip them in cream cheese. I like to dip them in the caramel. But most of all, I like to eat them like my dad taught me how to eat them. And that is with um, mustard. Now, I, I get the kind with the salt on them, and I, I take my finger and I rub off a lot of the salt, <laughs> right? I rub off a lot of the salt and put the mustard in. Oh, but I also like a cheese sauce on my pretzels. I live for a good hot pretzel, a good hot, soft, yeasty pretzel. Y'all, listen, I don't know if y'all know, but I made homemade pretzels. I made homemade pretzels and they were a turnout. My family went nuts over them from scratch. I made it from scratch. So if you have not seen the, the video when I made homemade pretzels, check it out. It was one of the most funnest videos that I've ever done. No, Christy says, Gina, they make hot pretzels with Cream cheese on them? No. What they're doing is they're giving you little sauce, little sauce containers, right? And you have the option to choose what you want, right? So you can say, I want cream cheese. They'll give you a little container this big, just a little tiny container. Whoops. Let, let me plug the charger in. They'll give you a little teeny tiny charge, not charger, a little tiny container of cream cheese that's warm or, or warm cheese sauce or a warm caramel that you can dip it in, or mustard. And I always say, give me the caramel, or the cream cheese, or the cheese sauce, the best. Oh, you haven't had a pretzel in years? Oh, I know when we went to the zoo, I seen some ladies walking by and I was just looking at them like this. They had pretzels in their hand and I said, I should have went over there. <laughs> <laughs> Godiva, that, that is such a great chocolate. Absolutely, I, I love it. Don't make me shop for a soft pretzel. Uh, anymore, you can get pretzels um, at your local Walmart or your local market. You get them in the frozen section, right? And then you bring them home and I think you throw them in the microwave. You might put them in the oven, but you guys are making me want a pretzel. I love that yeasty flavor. Oh my goodness. Oh, you made a bunch of the chocolate pretzels. Okay. Bueno chocolate. I have. I've had the bueno chocolate. I have. I think that's how you say it. I have had that. We must be getting storms coming here in Illinois. It's getting dark there. Oh my goodness. Derek, will you be careful? Oh, please be careful. Wetzel pretzels are good. I've never heard of that. If I'm, I don't know if I'm saying it wrong, but it sound, it, it, it has a funny name. Oh, pray it's not storming your way. So far it's not. <laughs> um, it does look like it's chilly outside though. The weather hadn't been the best, y'all. I don't know where summer has went because we ain't had a whole lot of sunny days. 
Adija. <laughs> you want a you want a pretzel too? Me too. Gina, I heard you say peanut butter and honey mixed in a jar together are good, but where do you buy this? You can buy it at Walmart. If you have a Walmart, buy it there. Dakota, see if there's a, a, a jar. Don't we got a jar up there, peanut butter, honey? Get it real quick. I know, Sonya. Oh, y'all, let me tell you what's good. Oh, with thick cream cheese. My, and the cream cheese has to be warm. Let me see. Where's the peanut butter? Yes, is that the kind with the honey? Give it to me, give it to me. The people want to see. All right. Okay, people. Creamy, dreamy. Creamy, dreamy, Peter Pan. Honey roasted. Creamy. Y'all talk about good. Okay? Honey roasted. Creamy, dreamy. There it is. When I tell y'all it's good, it's good. Look like somebody done went in with a fork. I know it. That's Dakota. Do you see? That's the cup. I know it is. He's smiling, y'all. He got the biggest smile on his face. Okay, Purple Love said, I'm going to check it out. I'm checking it out. You had honey peanut butter for your late night snack. Peanut butter's good for you. Oh, you meant Jiffy. Ronald, 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 this is the kind, get yourself. <laughs> jelly is your, jelly is your favorite strawberry and grape. Mm -hmm. It is good. Yes, yes, yes. So it's going to look like this. Just take a screenshot of it. It's good, yes, yes, yes. You, you don't even need jelly with it. Just get your piece of bread. Don't, when you put the peanut butter on the bread, y'all, don't put big, thick peanut butter on the bread. It just ruins everything. Just put a thin layer, and then you don't need to have anything to drink. It might not be just Peter Pan. It might be other um, peanut butters that makes it with the honey. Yeah, however. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay, so Erica. Erica says, oh, Skippy does. Okay, Erica says she got hers from Dollar. Let me see. Erica? Erica says she got hers from Dollar General. Yes, so isn't that great? Uh-huh. Great value. Okay, so you say great value makes it too. Oh yeah, so you pretty much can find it in any type brand. Hello from Louisiana. Welcome in, Betty. You, you have to try. Oh, so here's what I was going to tell you. So when I was younger, my brother used to make this. He would take bread. He would toast the bread. Is both dogs in? He would take bread. He would toast the bread just in a toaster while the toast was still hot. He would smear on peanut butter, on two pieces, okay? Smear peanut butter on, and then he would stack it, okay? So you got a piece of toast with peanut butter, another piece of toast with peanut butter, and he'd lift that one up and he'd put some syrup on the first one, put the other one down, put syrup on that. He ate it like it was French toast. It was one of the best things you ever want to try. If you have kids, anybody you think would try this recipe, make it for yourself and try it just to see if you would love it for a late night snack or even breakfast. It is so good. But you must make sure that the peanut butter goes onto the toast 
while the toast is still hot, and then you put syrup. You cut it with a fork and a knife, and it is so good. It's so good. I don't know about that, Nancy. Oh, I think my husband would like that. A peanut butter sandwich and some milk with ice. Oh, he, every day. He, he would enjoy it. <laughs> Everybody said, that does sound good. <laughs> okay, so Myra says, I toast my bread, spread the peanut butter. Oh, and you're going to put jelly on yours. Okay. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Okay, you said you don't know why you thought the live started at 6. Okay. Now, see, here's the thing about Saturdays. Saturdays is always 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Now, I did tell you all on Mondays and Wednesdays, I was moving the live from 5 p.m. to 6. 6 gives me time to do things throughout the day um, and not have to rush to the live. So, Mondays and Wednesdays, the live is at 6. Saturday is always 4 p.m. Peanut butter sandwich and milk is good. <laughs> but, y'all, please, you have done that before? Try the peanut butter on the toast with the syrup. It is so good. <laughs> it is. I promise you'll like it if you like peanut burger. Peanut butter. I said peanut burger. Um, Gina, I like... Uh, oh, Gina, do you like... Gina, you like yogurt? I do like yogurt. And yogurt is healthy. It's especially healthy for females. Um, I do like yogurt. I, I can say... I, I'm not a fan of Greek yogurt. Greek yogurt is going to be the healthiest for you. Um, the type of yogurt that I buy when I want to eat yogurt is the Carb Smart. Can, do I have any here? Go see if I have Carb Smart. Carb Smart because it's low in sugar and it's healthy for me. You know, I got to watch my carbs. But I can still get that yogurt taste and, and know that I'm eating something healthy when I don't want to eat breakfast. So let me show you the Carb Smart. This is what I'll eat in a jiffy. So this one here, it's Carb Smart. I don't know if you can read that. But this is the lemon flavor here. And um, it says there's uh, one gram. Let's see, I can't even read it. My goodness. I need my glasses on to read it. It's gluten free. I, I can't read it, y'all. I wish I could. I can't read it, but it, it's it's very delicious, and and the carbs is really good for you. It, it's not like having a regular yogurt and you got all these carbs in it. I feel like if you're gonna eat yogurt, why eat the yogurt that has all that sugar in it? All that sugar in it, you might as well not. You might as well have had a pudding, right? Here you go. Th toss that and put it back. Mmm. You said you love lemon yogurt, equal raisin, and grape nuts. Oh, Betty. Betty, that sounds good. I ain't had grape nuts in I don't know how long. It's like a cereal, grape nut. It's just like cereal. It's kind of like granola. Oh, excuse me. Excuse me. Peanut butter and sardines, don't you? Uh-uh. I ain't doing it, Derek. Have you ever made brown sugar Italian chicken? Ethel. Ethel, let me tell you this. I have made... Uh, I, let's see, I gotta, I gotta think about what I've made. I've made brown stewed chicken. Okay, check me out. I don't know if I'm talking about what you're asking, but it's kind of on the lines. Brown stewed chicken is what I made. When you make it, and you make it authentically, authentically. Am I, am I saying that word, word right? Word, word right? Um, you turn around, and you brown your chicken in a little bit of brown sugar. Oh, 
my goodness. It gets a charred flavor on it that you can't regularly get by just sauteing the chicken up. So you're, you're cooking your chicken in this brown sugar, and then you begin to stew the chicken. This is some of the best chicken that you ever had, ever. So I have cooked chicken using brown sugar before. But as far as exactly what you're talking about, I, I don't know. Maybe that's what you're talking about. I know, so lemon bars. I'm going to have to get to the lemon bars for sure. Um, I had a difficult time when I made lemon bars before. They were very little, and I just wasn't happy with it. And I deleted my video. So I'm going to have to come back with redemption on my lemon bars because I want them to be this high up. I want them to be gorgeous and I want them to taste good. The lemon bars that I made in 2017, they were great, but I want them to be even greater. I want them to be the greatest on YouTube. <laughs> so I gotta perfect a video, I gotta perfect the recipe. After I perfect it, I can bring it to you. Uh, am I still working on the Chicago deep dish? I haven't begun to work on it yet. I, I still have that video? Okay, so I still have a video for the lemon bars. Dakota just pulled it up. I thought I deleted that video because I wasn't happy with how short they were. Mm -hmm. Nate Dog, welcome back in. Deborah says, I love lemon bars. No, I don't want you to delete it. You gonna delete something without asking me? No, heck no. <laughs> if it ain't deleted, don't mess with it. <laughs> what about chicken and rice bake? Like the chicken put in the rice that is so good. Myra, I just did a chicken rice bake just like a week ago. That's good. What, what is it? What, what, tell me what your accent, huh? Look how many ads. How many what? How many ads? What about it? It's good. It's a 30 minute meal with six hours. Good evening, Zadi. Welcome in. Thank you for coming in and joining today. Gina, you have a recipe for rice pudding? Yes, I do. Yes, I do. Some of the best rice pudding you ever tasted out there. Uh, and it's easy. It's easy peasy. With my rice pudding, I just have to say, I like to eat my rice pudding warm. When you eat it when it's warm, it tastes so good, y'all. My rice pudding is good. Gina, uh, just did a chicken and rice. Yes, thank you. Gina, thanks for putting up the tuna melt video. You're welcome. You're welcome. The tuna melt was fun. It was fun and it tastes so good. That tuna salad had to be some of the best tuna salad. My husband was sitting out back. He was laying down, getting ready to go to sleep on the couch outside. And I said, taste the tuna salad. Or no, I didn't even tell him. I didn't even tell him what it was. I just took the spoon and said, taste. <laughs> and put it in his mouth. He said, mmm, tuna. And I said, yeah, he said, it's good. <laughs> It's too much stress. Okay, so Mary says, thank you so much. Today is the first time I've ever made beef stroganoff. I was worried about the tenderness of the meat. And I have to say that, honestly, it was delicious. And out of this world, Mary Graham, thank you. Thank you, Mary. That's great. I love when you can tell the people what you have experienced when you made a recipe, Gina Young style. I'd love to hear it. Thank you. Tuna melt. The tuna melt was fun. Yes, it was. Somebody says, oh, I'm loving this channel. Let me see. <laughs> beef stroganoff is my favorite dish too now Derek did you cook with me today or did you just take notes oh 
Oh, you have to go back and watch it. Okay, yeah, that's fine. <laughs> yes, I did, Christy. Mushrooms on a tuna melt? Well, I don't know so much about mushrooms on a tuna melt. I wouldn't do that. I don't think it would just, it just wouldn't go. As much as I like mushrooms, it wouldn't go. It doesn't, it doesn't match. <laughs> it doesn't match. <laughs> have you ever made risotto? Yes, I have, Jared. I have made risotto. Um... I made a mushroom risotto and it turned out beautiful. I have made it on this channel, so there is a video out there. It's so much fun and it's really relaxing to make risotto. It, it is, it is. Hey Brenda, welcome in. You're never too late. If you didn't cook with me, don't worry about being late. Don't you worry about it, uh-uh. Have you ever mixed two meats together in a dish? I have. And let me tell you what dish. Well, the dish would be fried rice. I've made a combination fried rice with beef, shrimp, chicken. Absolutely I have, right? So um, that's one recipe. It's successful, it's delicious, and it's so easy to make. It is. Good evening, Jade. Oh, yeah, Christopher said, I've done that before. Mm -hmm. So I could answer that question real quick. Combination fried rice with all of those meats. No, if you, you say, who taught you how to dance? Nobody. Here's the thing. I feel like if you have rhythm, you don't have to be taught how to dance, right? So that, that's what I think about when it comes to dancing. If you got the rhythm, you can pick up a dance, right? But I'd like to say that my mom and my dad both had good rhythm. I'm talking about rhythm. So, uh, and both of them did. I, I mean, I can remember Saturdays. I can just remember watching them dance or just watching them dance when music was on. And I, or watching my dad dance on skates. And, and when I got to a certain age, I thought, my daddy got some rhythm. <laughs> my mom got rhythm, you, you know, and, and you can see it. You know, when you're growing up and you see your family members dance. Right. <laughs> empanadas. I have a recipe for empanadas. I do. Beautiful recipe. Dancing, it is. It's so much fun. Oh, you just finished making a pepper steak. You let me know how it turns out. Did you put did you put um uh did you put tomatoes in the pepper steak? Did you put tomatoes in it? Sea pug, it's okay. Or sea poo. It's okay, no issues. If you didn't cook with me, you're never too late. It's okay. It is, it is great exercise to dance. It really is. I know you haven't had one in years. Listen, what you need to do is, um, Next time you go to your your uh your whatever store you shop at, get you one. Get you one. Me and my husband, we 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 love these. <laughs> we love these. Now I'm one of those people. I can't suck on this forever. I wind up after about 10 sucks, I, I'll bite it. I, I want to get to the gum, but then I'm upset that I got to the gum because I got retainers on the back of my teeth. And I can't get gum stuck on there. So I wind up sucking on the gum and then I throw it away. <laughs> No tomatoes, but it's good. Okay. <laughs> okay. I'm glad I read your message. Oh, you said that's funny. You have yours. Okay. 
Gina, is there anything that you find difficult to make? Yes. Yes. I tried to make the black Haitian rice, and it's called Rit de Jean Jean. I tried to make it, and I failed. It was an epic fail, and I was beside myself. I was so upset that I, it didn't turn out right. Dijon Jean rice. It's a black mushroom rice. It is one of the most flavorful rices you ever want to taste in this whole white world. So delicious, so much flavor. I failed. It didn't turn out right, and I was mad. Now, I did delete that video. But, uh, so, yeah. And sometimes that will happen. And I always like to tell you guys, when something like that happens to you, pick yourself up and try it again, you know? I haven't picked myself up and tried that again. <laughs> But I love that rice, and I have yet to find some more Haitian food. I love Haitian food. <laughs> I do. The Jean Jean rice is black. It is delicious. I mean, it's not like the color black. It's more of a brownish color. It is so delectable. But Gina Young, right now, I'm not an experienced cook with that when it comes to making that specific recipe. I can make all the rest of their foods that they make. I can't. But that, I struggle a little bit with it. I have made griot. I got a couple videos making griot. And it is so, my griot is so authentic. You will flip out. You will say, oh my goodness. Gina, like this tastes just like when I go out to the restaurant. And I'm looking at you like, yes, it is, because it's authentic. <laughs> it's that good. It is. I love my grill. I, I, I make up the whole A-piece, the A-piece spice that you need to cook Haitian food. I make it. Yes, I do. I make it. Oh, you make it with the calamari. My goodness. <laughs> You'll speak Creole after eating it, Gina Young. You might. <laughs> you may. You never know. <laughs> Were you, okay, let me see. This is funny. Were you ever a bartender and you got that vibe? Never. I don't know nothing about alcohol or even how to mix anybody's drinks. Only kind of drink I know how to mix together is some Tang and Kool-Aid. That's about the only kind of drink I know how to mix. <laughs> I don't know how to mix nobody's drink or be behind anybody's bar. <laughs> I don't. K Coffee is just laughing at me. I did. I worked at McDonald's before. I'd like to say I was 17 years old. I worked at McDonald's for a very short time. Not even a week. About 17 years old, I'd like to say. Have you ever made smoked? No, I haven't made that. T uh, what's your name again? T-Love? No, I haven't made that. Tang, I know, Tang and Kool-Aid. Look, look, this is so funny, Sonya. Hold on. Oh, if I can reach it. That's what my plans is for tonight. Got some Tang on deck and I'm making some. I'm making some because I want to have some later. Tang has a lot of vitamin C in it. If you didn't already know, Tang. Oh, listen, we could go to my grandma's house when I was younger. She would have Tang, and I was excited. Tang, and then there was always, and then my grandpa, he had gum, juicy fruit gum, in the freezer, and he had a ton of it in there. And I knew when I was going to grandmom's, there was two things that I was getting. I was getting me some Tang to drink, and I was getting in the freezer to get some of that juicy fruit gum that my grandpa had in there. I know. And then my grandmom also had, this when I was young, young. My grandmom also had 
a horse, uh, one of the play horses. It was like a white horse, and then it had the four chains that was on the thing, and you could bounce on it. I know I would be going over doing that. And then on her bed, she had a pillow that was like, it was kind of like that the pillow was rubber. And I used to love to bounce my head on that pillow because I felt like it was a rubber pillow or something. I don't know what type of pillow that was, but it was the best pillow ever. <laughs> Hold on, y'all. Something's wrong with the lie. What you cooking, Gina? I've already cooked and I've made um, beef stroganoff today. Oh, you like the video on the stuffed salmon? Absolutely. Oh, probably memory foam. Oh, it could be. But back in the day, did they have memory foam when I was a kid? Alan, welcome in. Uh, I came in late. Can you start over? You know you funny. <laughs> you know you funny. It probably was a down pillow. It could have been. That pillow was so bouncy. And also, my gra yo, my grandma, <laughs> my grandma had like silk nightgowns. And if I spent a night over there, is this so funny? If I spent a night over there um, and I didn't have like pajamas, I would go in her top drawer. I did. I did. I would go in her top drawer and put one of her nightgowns on after I took a bath. And I had this silk nightgown on. I don't know who I thought I was. I'm talking about now I was little. I was a little girl. I put her silk nightgown on. <laughs> I wasn't hot and sweaty. <laughs> I wasn't a hot and sweaty kid, though. <laughs> Alan, how you doing? Welcome back in. Oh, where can you find those now? I know. I don't know. I don't know. And like I said, they was my grandmoms. And when I spent the night, I'd always look for her nightgowns that I used to love. I probably used to be spinning circles and act like I was a princess. I don't know what I used to do. <laughs> I love spending the night with my grandma. I did. I sleep in the same bed with her. And one time she told me, my grandma said, this is my dad's mom when I talk about my grandma. And one time she told me when I woke up, she said, Aunt, honey, I don't know what you was dreaming about. She said, but... I get woke up because you scratching my, the top of my head. <laughs> she said, you scratching the top of my head. I don't know what I was thinking. <laughs> she said, you woke me up. You just reaching over, scratching the top of my head. <laughs> I thought, really? She said, yeah, you woke me up. <laughs> right, Mimi. <laughs> It is funny, too. Y'all, I used to love my grandma. Mm -mm -mm. Oh, she was the best grandma ever. The best grandma. And that's what we called her. We called her grandma. Yes, Sunny D is similar to Tang. It is, Derek. Mm -hmm. Uh, do they really? If so, you need to invest in some, Myra. <laughs> oh, you don't like Sunny D? My husband doesn't like Sunny D. He says it's too thick. He says Sunny D's really thick. Now, when I was pregnant with Dakota, I wanted Sunny D. Uh, I wanted Sunny D all the time. I had him purchase that for me all the time. Do you like orange juice? I do. I do. Oh, you said they're on Amazon, but they're expensive, Myra. You said, Derek, they all first cousin. 
Do you remember making stocking caps out of stockings? No, no. I remember um, like using panties. If your hair was done, like, or you, or you would take panties and put it on top of your head and tie it to, to keep hold your hair into place. So when you woke up, your hair would be really nice for school tomorrow, the next day. <laughs> I don't remember using stockings for stocking caps. <laughs> That's cute. Your brother used to put that over his face and chase you. That's cute. <laughs> you said, okay, you're not old. I'm old. I am old, y'all. <laughs> I am old. I, I sure I, I sure the heck ain't young. Gina, remember tab? How bad it used to taste? I don't know what that is. I never heard of it. Gina, where are P and P? They're awful quite. I don't even know what you're talking about. Tab diet soda? Oh, I never heard of it. Okay, so Thomas says it was fun putting uh nylons over your is it right <laughs> i don't remember that that's funny i remember i think I, I feel like i remember shasta Oh, she was talking about Prince and Polo. Oh, okay, okay. I think that they're outside back with my husband. My husband is laying down in the backyard. Not in the backyard, but on the couch back there. Dakota's back there, and the dogs is back there. P and P are your pups. Okay, okay. They're doing great. They are doing great. They, they love my husband. They want to be with him all throughout the day. But at night, when it's bedtime, they want me and they only want me, right? They want me and they only want me, but not until nighttime. When it's nighttime, they let him know that they want me <laughs> and they ain't going with nobody else. But in the daytime, the heck with me. They don't want nothing to do with me. <laughs> The pups, do they sleep in your bed? I like to put them in the cage. There are times that they'll get in the bed with us and cuddle. Um, if we're just relaxing. But as far as... Hold on, y'all. Let me see what this message is. Um, uh, oh, oh, if we're, if we're all just relaxing in the bed or whatever, the puppies are in there relaxing with us. But when it gets to a certain time of night, I put them in the cage. My husband could sleep with them in there and I'm like, I don't want them in there with us. <laughs> so, but they have an amazing cage. They have this huge cage and they, and they're in the cage. They have a bunk bed in there. So one of the puppies would get up top. One of the puppies would get down in bottom. If you're in the bottom, there's a blanket down there for them. Sometimes they cuddle on the top of the bed together. Sometimes they cuddle on the bottom. Sometimes one's at the top, one's at the bottom. And if we say get in the cage, they'll go in there. They don't mind it because they've had that cage since they were like this big. Right? So they, it's, it's not like a punishment getting in the cage. So there are some times they'll sleep with us. Not often. When we're in the bed, just relaxing, they're in the bed with us. I 
I don't like diet soda. Diet pops for me is a no-go. Let me ask y'all this. How many of you had a great time today? Oh, your dog snores. Prince snores. Derek Prince snores. They turn upside down and they sleep like this, number one. And he snores. Oh, my goodness. And it's just so cute. I think they are adorable when they're sleeping. Um, Prince snores. He snores like a human. Oh, Myra, you said some of the words coming out wrong. It's okay, because when I'm texting, I'm texting the wrong stuff all the time. <clears throat> I'm glad y'all enjoyed this evening. I had such a great time. Okay, K Coffee says, I always have a good time. Absolutely, and we are family. <laughs> all right, absolutely. Well, I'm glad y'all had a great time. I'm glad I was able to share this amazing recipe with you all. Excuse me, that you can make it with your family. Now, if you don't like sour cream, you don't have to put it in there, but it's a recipe you're gonna love. You're gonna love. And remember, when you're making the gravy, don't worry, when it's thick, you just keep adding liquid until you get that perfect consistency, right? But um, I enjoyed my time today. I enjoyed my time today with you all. No, Ronald, but you said you ever snore and then wake yourself up like what happened? No, not me, but what happens to me, y'all, is I bite my tongue. I bite my tongue when I go to sleep and I wake myself up and that is the worst thing. Cause it's like when my mouth is, I guess when my mouth is relaxed, my face begins to relax. I bite down on my tongue so hard. It's always on the left side of my tongue and it hurts. Talk about waking up to yourself almost biting your tongue off like the worst thing. That happens to me a whole lot and I don't like it. <laughs> yeah, it hurts. Chaser, welcome in. Oh, dogs have nightmares too. Ooh, you used to bite your tongue and cheek. So much fun. I'm not gonna wear no mouth guard. Already wear. So I got two retainers on the back of my teeth here. And um, they're very thin. It's just a piece of metal. But then I pop in a uh, physical retainer on the top of my teeth when I go to sleep. And then you say and put a mouth guard on top of that. I wouldn't be able, I would never be able to sleep. <laughs> Y'all, I'm gonna get off of here. I had such a great time with you all. And I'm coming back. Coming back on Monday. On Monday, we're going live. We're gonna have a good time. Tomorrow, I'm going to be letting you all know what we're going to be cooking on when, on Monday. It's going to be fun. It will be at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. When is the camping? The camping will be soon. We just, on a serious note, seriously, it's freezing out where I live. It's freezing out. We ain't had no good weather. We ain't had no good weather. Where's the summer? <laughs> what happened to the summer? As soon as I get the good heat, the good weather, we're going to do it. And I, I promised y'all we was going to. We're going to. It's going to be fun. <laughs> you said he got nightmares when he's awake. <laughs> it's warm and humid there. Oh, my goodness. Yes, see you on Monday. I love each and every one of y'all from the bottom of my heart. Bring it on in. Give me a big old hug, y'all. I love you so much. I appreciate each and every one of you. When we come live on Monday at 6 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time, it'll be fun. We're going to have a good time, okay? So thank you for coming in. 
I love you all. Thanks to my moderators. I love you guys. Thanks to the new subscribers, the current and the old subscribers. Tell your family and friends and everybody you know. Tell the whole world what Gina is doing in this kitchen on a daily basis. I love you. God bless you. Have a great night.